In December, Israel assassinated a top Iranian nuclear scientist using artificial intelligence, according to the New York Times. The report notes that Mozen Farah Khazadi had been on Israeli agents' radar for years, convinced the scientist was leading Iran's efforts to build a nuclear bomb. So the story here isn't just how Israel used what the New York Times once mockingly dubbed as a killer robot to assassinate Iran's top nuclear expert. But the publication's tendency here to take Israel's word as truth. So friend of the show, Trita Parsi, tweeted, no less than three times does it cite Israel's justification for its assassinations at face value. It's solely to stop Iran's non-existent nuclear weapons program. No mention that U.S. intelligence assesses that Iran has not had an active weapons program since 2003, end quote. He also notes, quote, particularly astonishing that it categorically writes that Israel sought to force Iran to accept strict constraints on its program. In reality, Israel pushed for wildly unrealistic restrictions it knew Iran would never accept in order to escalate matters to a conflict, end quote. The, this sto- so, Alyssa, this was a, f- a fascinating story, partly because, you know, in December, as we mentioned, when the New York Times... Uh, you know, first reported on this assassination, it, it wrote in a completely mocking fashion about an, the Iranian claim that this had been uh, an AI robot that had, without any assassins present, carried out this execution. Uh, it, it now turns out that that explanation that the Times had mocked back in December is the explanation that they have now confirmed as, as accurate, and that, that is how it, how it played out. The article, aside from uh, Trita Parsi's critique, doesn't go, doesn't go into any of the questions around the ethics or the legality of, of, of the assassination uh, program. But what, it, what did you make of this? So a lot to unpack here. Um, I I would disagree with the assessment that Iran does not, is not on the cusp of nuclear capabilities and the International Atomic Energy Agency tasked by the UN. Weapons capabilities. Weapons capabilities is fair. um, Tasked by the UN with monitoring their their movements toward trying to obtain a nuclear weapon came out saying that they were within two months of having enough enriched uranium to do so. So I don't think we can wholeheartedly dismiss that that is A, their aspiration. And I think think that's fair. And and I think Trita is going a a bit a bit far with that, uh, but in all other cases, uh, the New York Times or many other cases, the New York Times will say according to X, right, rather than right. just rather than just stated as fact. Well, no, and the, the bigger point that you alluded to that's extremely important is there's a there's a massive global debate uh, within the military and defense community over the use of artificial intelligence in in warfare. Uh, the Chinese have it, the Russians have it, we have it, the Israelis certainly do, and many others. And what doors do we open if we start to say that? you know, without any human direction, you're going to have killing machines that can take out high value targets. Now, do I think this person was justifiable to assassinate? 100%. Do I think it's ethical um, or is it open to an ethical debate to use artificial intelligence to carry out assassinations? I think it's very dangerous territory. And I'd I'd note when I was at the Department of Defense about a year ago, we released principles of ethical AI use. And it was an internal major deliberation within DOD, some who are very much for this is where warfare is going and we have to keep up with our adversaries. And those on the other side of if you believe in just war theory and if you believe in doing everything possible to potentially de-escalate, to avoid civilian casualties, how could you ever even open the door to this? And it's a little stunning that the New York Times didn't even really get into that discussion. Yeah, art- artificially intelligent killer robots. Raise a, raise a few questions. On, on the question of assassinating scientists, though, where does that end? Does, does Iran, you know, Israel does not have uh, international recognition for a nuclear program. Does Iran have the legal and ethical ability to go in and execute uh, Israeli scientists? Well, I think you tack the word scientist onto it, it makes it sound something more benign. It'd kind of be like if I was talking about um, a biochemist who's creating bioweapons and call him a doctor. It just makes it sound like something a little less dangerous okay, than but it then actually can, is. Can Iran kill 
biochemists in the Israel or in the United States? Well, I, they, I would say absolutely not. But Iran's the leading state sponsor of terror. They've already, ex, you know, they publicly state they want Israel wiped off the map. The U.S. is their great enemy. The Israel, I would say, is a legitimate democratic government that tries to work within international norms. And there's many critiques that you can have of the Israelis' defense polit, uh, policies, but they, they, they do try to work within inter international norms, which the Iranians don't, and by any means, try to do. I don't know. I feel like you, when you get into assassinating civilians, uh, especially when they're not actually at, even at war, uh, it feels uh, just I, I, way I over guess the top. My, and, my, oh, speaking of terrorists, by yeah. the way, uh, the, the New York Times says that Ar Iranian agents uh, placed this AI weapon into the bed of a pickup truck and then camouflaged it and then ditched the scene before, uh, before the scientists got there. By all logic, those Iranian agents were MEK which is a terrorist group, according to the United States. I and mean, what it used to be until they, they paid enough you know, U.S. elites to get themselves off the, off the list. But they are, a lot of people globally designate them as a terrorist group. They've committed, terror, they've committed terrorist acts, they suicide bombings, et cetera. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's just you know, one, one, one terror group fighting a terror group, it seems like. Yeah, I just have a hard time accepting that this this nuclear scientist whose job was directly tied to the goal of achieving nuclear capabilities for the purpose of warfare is a civilian in the sense of his but job. Do you know in, that for sure? It, it seems pretty clear in the reporting from The Times. That, that, that would be where the holdup is. I mean, listen, if this is a guy in a lab who just wants to explore the benefits of, you know, nuclear energy and, and that's creating a, a more inclusive right. economy, right. that would be one thing. I just, I don't buy those claims by the Iranians. What, what about the other claim that, uh, that Israel's goal is actually, uh, you know, to, to prevent the, uh, Iran's nuclear program when the nuclear deal that they did everything they could to try to scuttle was actually the thing that was making progress in slowing the nuclear program. They, they, don't, they don't seem as if they're actually attempting to do anything other than create conflict that then further polarizes the region and then strengthens their ties with, with the U.S. at a See, yeah, I subscribe to probably more of the Israelis' position on the Iran nuclear deal. Um, I'd like to say it was well-intentioned, but I don't know how you can think that when you're turning over, uh, you know, tens of billions of dollars in, in sanctions on f money that went to terrorist funding and that we know went directly to funding then Hezbollah, Hamas, and other Iranian proxies all over the world. Um, but also the fact that, yes, there were some systems built in, like the IAEA being able to go in and look at different technologies that they might be developing and how they're advancing their systems, but it put the Iranians on a glide, glide path through its sunset clause of allowing them to create a nuclear weapon. I think it was an extremely flawed deal. I think it's a mistake that the Biden administration will likely go back into it. And I think what you're seeing from the Israelis, this sort of ramping up of tensions with the Iranians and taking these unilateral strikes is out of fear that the Biden administration is going to walk us into a bad deal that ensures Iran gets a nuclear weapon. Right, but Israel never did anything to try to make it a decent deal. Like they, they, they actively do not want negotiations. Like they want, they want military conflict. They uh, see, I would disagree. I just don't think you can have good negotiations with the Iranians. Again, the biggest state sponsor of terror, I think that it's a completely rogue regime that's not interested in existing in any serious way on the world stage. The only way that I personally think diplomatically, if you could even call it that, that you can deal with them is get a coalition of Arab nations, the Saudis, um, the, the Omanis, the Bahrainis, who do want to isolate Iran. They've seen the way that they can destabilize the entire region, particularly economically, but also militarily, and try to get them to a place where they're willing to hold them accountable. But um, that's not exactly the reality that we're existing in right now. Right. And once again, we, there wouldn't even be this regime if the U.S. hadn't uh, cooed to the, their government in 1954, <laughs> creating the conditions that led, that led to them. But but yes, and, and again, very interesting questions raised about the use of artificial technology and warfare, a very dangerous door that we are open, opening and no one seems to be paying attention to. Killer robots, not good. More rising after this.